put that transmitter like right in here. Yeah, this is the that. transmitter that pings. Have you ever wondered how scientists gather the information on fish, like how old an individual fish is, or migratory patterns, or when they become mature? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna go over in this video. I had someone from FWC approach me and ask if I would be interested in getting them out there and helping uh, tag and sample and even put transmitters on some cobia. And I was all about it. I wanna learn more about the process. It seemed like an awesome thing to bring you guys along for and show you what's going on and maybe teach you a little bit about them because I definitely learned a little bit through this process as well. Now we're also going to be sampling some cobia that we kept so hang around till the end and we'll show you something pretty crazy of how they tell exactly how old a fish is. Let's go ahead and get in the action because the first step to tagging and tracking and gathering information on a cobia is catching a cobia. Tight, honey, that a girl. Perfect. All right, we got our first Kobe for the day. So we got our first fish. Yeah, nice one, Robin. We're gonna hold him right here and make sure a shark doesn't come up and eat him while we get the rest of the gear set up. Yep. I'm gonna bring him right up to you. Just help me out with him a little bit and we'll get him out of the net. I got hold of it. Perfect. That is a perfect fish right there. Go for it. That hook's still there, just be careful. There we go. Stay. Settle down, buddy, settle down. Cool. Remember these numbers. Oh, well, we'll have it all on video too. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, 910, 1030. So that's all the right. measurements. Now I'm just going to make a little incision and put that transmitter like right in here. These so guys cool. are pretty cool. He gets yeah. nothing on me. We see, he can, he's feeling it. But that body wall's pretty good. Still nothing, man. Okay. Stay. That's good enough. Tag. Oh, can you get this number? It's uh, 13,990. 13,990. Well, that's the whole thing that goes inside of it? Yeah. Oh this is the transmitter that pings. Yep. Okay. Oh my god. And that won't hurt them? I didn't see them. Nah, there's, um, so their intestines run right down oh the middle. God, I usually so say good. offset. So. Gotcha. And then you gotta stitch them? We'll put one suture in. Got the hook out. Good job, buddy. Look at that. So these are, um, isn't that cool? What kind of transmitters are they? Acoustic transmitters. Acoustic transmitters. So it puts out a little signal and then we can monitor. This is so fascinating. Where it's been, where it goes to, where it's... Isn't that cool? Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Now let me wrap this. It's funny, he does calm down once he's upside down. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. Oh, he has one stitch to do. Nice. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah, he's, he should be breathing. I could have got that a little tighter, but we'll do well, better next time. I'm trying not to touch All his right. gills. I'm just All holding right. his head down. Flip him over. So, oh, look. So so this is like what, the little... What's the tag on it? Come here. Yeah, little tag in the, in the dorsal. Oh. Oh, and that's his tag. Perfect. Very nice. Cobia is tagged. You want to um, let it go? Sure. So there we go, that's a nice cobia. First one that tagged for the day. That's actually a nice keeper fish too. Yeah. And we got to get him nice and swimming. Oh, oh he's, he's a happy cobia. Make sure he's got enough energy so a shark doesn't get him. I'll take that. You got it? Yep. What a happy cobia. Jim, look at this happy cobia. <laughs> Not yet, I got him for... Oh, I can feel him kicking a little bit. Then how lucky he is. Yeah. Any other day he'd be coming home with us. 
know it'd be fun, but what if we caught him again before the end of the Yeah. <laughs> All right, there he goes. Kick, kick, go, kick buddy. him on, kick, go, buddy. buddy. Oh, there he goes. Oh, there he goes. Good, great, great. So you saw the acoustic receiver implanted into the fish. Now, how do we get the information from this fish back into human hands? Because there's a chance that people are never going to see this fish again. Now, a satellite tag, which people are pretty familiar with how it works, it goes to a satellite, and then we have access to the information just sitting at home on a computer. Uh, an acoustic tag, it needs. It's always putting the information out there, but it needs something to catch the information. So there are these acoustic receivers or stations uh, throughout the ocean that are put out there by various groups, whether it's the group we are working with today through FWC, or it could be a private group studying sea turtles, or it could be another part of FWC studying sharks or NOAA studying sharks or whatever it is. Uh, but these receivers, they don't just collect the data for their cobia uh, transmitters. They collect every single acoustic transmitter that happens to go by and then there's a big pool of data and when someone gets the cobia uh, information, they say, oh, this belongs to FWC. Let's go ahead, contact them, tell them we got a ping on one of their cobia receivers or transmitters. And they all work together and share the, share the stations. Because if you have, were in charge of putting stations throughout the ocean, the ocean's a really big place. But now if you have everyone putting out their stations and sharing the data, that's what makes it work. And we got that little diagram to hopefully make it pretty easy for you to understand. Now let's get back to tagging some more cobias. All right, cobia number two for the day. Oh, I think I can hold them. All right. You got them? Yep. The whole time. That's probably enough. Right? Yeah. Good. Now, Jim's gonna get the measurements. Yeah, let's look at that first. Fork is 770 and total is 882. Let me write that down. Nice little incision for that acoustic tag. Just try to keep it about the width of the bottom of the tag. A little bit bigger. Yeah. Usually if I can get... Just big enough to fit that in there. Yeah, there you go. So, that's good right there. Oh, that's nice and tight. The next one I really need to get a good knot. There we go. Yeah. Pulls that skin nice and tight together. Yeah. That uh, tail clipping too over here. Yeah. Or fin clipping. Hold still, Bubba. So this is we're for genetic? Done. That's genetic and then we do a dark tag and we're... And right there. It's already loaded up. And this is the one, if you guys catch a Kobe and see that, all the information's on there. There's an 800 number on there and you can just call that number and let, you can even let them go, especially like this one, this short. Kobe, oh, he's already kicking. Yeah, he's kicking, he's good. He's a little confused, but he'll be good. No, don't swim like that. You're gonna get blown up by a bull shark. You swim like that, there you go, go down. You keep looking at your fish. You got a little Kobe by you, Robin, too. Perfect. All right, this one can even go in the live well if we needed to. Little Kobe in the well. He needs to chill out. Number three Kobe in the well for the day. So that'll be three tagged and released Kobias. Jim's just getting all set up for the next one or for the one we just put in the live well, and we'll take it out of the live well and uh, get all the data for it. A few little scales. Scraping some scales off so you can make a clean cut. And that's the part they don't like a little bit, but he didn't. Perfect. Much better. So oh, now, buddy. <laughs> there you go. All right, and the second one really locks it in. Oh, it's wrapped wrong. <laughs> there we go. Oh, 
try to get that arrow. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. You want small That's one? what we need right there. Nice cobia. In the net. Another one, perfect. That's what we're looking for. We don't need all giants today. No. Little fun size cobia right, coming up here. I can grab them out for you. Cool. Here's my balance. Yep. Hold on, baby. Hey, you can fly this way. There we go. It's hidden. It's like little Easter eggs. I know. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> if you catch this cobia, you get an absolutely free acoustic tag. And a t-shirt. A t-shirt. Call bucks. the number. And 50 and bucks. 50 bucks. 50, 50 bucks. bucks. Call the number, return it, and the data will be collected and you'll be happy. And Jim jumps in here and gets a little uh, suture in action. Open that first one's just kind of like a crazy looking shoelace knot you did a couple times and this is what locks it in there really good. Do that and that'll heal up nice. Cobia got There's a look at another one of our cobias for the day. Just kind of mellowed out in the live well. That is cool. Pet cobias. There you go, Kobe going down. I got something. I got sharks rolling on it. Honey, grab me in the net. Honey, grab me in the net. I will. No, it's a runner, I think. Oh, it's a runner? Oh, no, a little amberjack. Oh, a little amberjack. Good job, Joey. Let's grab that little net, or big net, any net. It might not have been a shark, it might have been him flashing. Perfect. Here we go, a little amberjack on the jig. Yep, yep. Perfect. So not only are we doing cobia today, but we're doing amberjacks. We're not doing everything, but we just got lucky and got an amberjack while cobia fishing. And I'm guessing if we got one amberjack, that there's 500 down there. Yeah. So he's doing the same thing here. Nice little amberjack. Selling up cobias and amberjacks today. And these little amberjacks, someone might be commenting, thinking, why are you doing that with such a small amberjack? Because his expiration date's theoretically a lot further away than a 40 pound amberjack. So you get more information or yeah, different get information. Oh, from... uh, they move around more? Well, to see if they move around more. Now. Yeah. And in my experience, we don't catch big amberjacks where we catch the little ones. So, so it'll move. Yeah. As, as he grows, he should go out to some of the deeper stuff. Nice. Yeah. He's good to go. You just want to shoot him in, or yeah, however you want to do it. Yep, you're good. I don't need to do anything with him. There we go. Shot himself. Yeah, amberjacks are a little more feisty. That's cool. We got like five cobias and an amberjack so far. For science. Another little cobia. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Game. Here, just I'm just gonna leader him. No, you, you can get him in the net. Yeah, I mean I was gonna leader him into the net, but you got him. What a cute little Perfect. Boy. Opening here, but you see two slits behind it. Yeah. So one's the Owa duck for a female. That shows you, indicates that it's a female. Nice. So this is that one Robin just got. Yeah. Nice little cobia. Normally we don't want little cobias. Today we will take we'll any them. cobia. We got four-year tag, so this one we'll be able to monitor it for at least four years if it stays stays off the hook. <laughs> that's awesome. 640, 720. So that's the size, a fork length and a total length. Just made it pee. <laughs> yeah. That thing goes right in there, and we're not cutting into the guts or anything like that. It's just right next to the intestines. Yeah, it's right on top of the gonads. Usually the gonads will be down closer to the vertebrae. 
Uh, like a pocket kind pocket of? Pocket because the gonads will get bigger when they're in the spawning position. There's another cobia, another green, lime green tag cobia. There. Yep. Good to go. It's take off. Another cobia, check out that tag. This one's super lively. Whoa. I'm gonna kind of shoot him away. There Perfect. he goes. Woo. I got picked up. I get dropped. No, he's coming at us. I got a something. Oh boy. Cobra on. Nice one. Nice cobra. Okay, well, I'll take our time and it'll all be good. Yep. Settle down, cobra. That's all right. Just take your time. Oh, look at that cobia. You might, cobia. you might be a keeper. Yeah, big head. Yeah. Okay, honey. Alright, I'm gonna try to tire him out a little more. We got him on, the, got him on the spinning rod. The Saldex 6K. Oh, a little too deep. One more spin. I think we got him right here. Oh, come on, turn, 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 buddy. Oh, he got his head down on me. That's not good. He got his head down on me for a second. I know, I need to get him floating. Come on, buddy. Yep, I'm feeling them. Making sure I don't let them get in the trim tabs or motors. There we go, in the net. In the net and in the boat. That's another keeper fish. Look at that hook right there. Perfect. So even though we're out here, doing a lot of catch and release and cobias and tagging cobias today. We got a couple nice ones for the box so far. This makes number three. We got three cobia keepers. We lost a nice one. And then we also got six cobias that were tagged and released. We're back in, cleaning up. You saw us catch some nice Kobe today, but now it's time to find out what the prize inside is. And that's because Jim's gonna go in there now and we're gonna show you what's inside these Kobe's. There's more stuff that we're gonna collect. So even though we killed a couple fish, we let six fish go with tags in them, including a nice keeper Kobe. That was very lucky because keeper Kobe don't get let go very often by these hands. But we'll show you what we got in here. We got those three that we kept. They were in an ice slush. I just pulled the plug. It's draining now. We're gonna head up to the fillet table and take a look inside these fish. That's a nice one right there. Another Cobia missile. And then the prized catch of the day. Some nice Cobias. Jim's got it all set up here. Can you go over like the tools and stuff real quick? Sure. Like what we got? I know what these are. I'll just go right through it. Those are genetic files. Yeah. First thing we'll do is we'll weigh it because we don't always get a, a whole weight because we, a lot of these are carcasses. So we'll get a whole weight. Um, I'll get a fin clip again on the bottom for the genetic files. We'll get lengths, uh, standard for total length. Those are, those are the genetic files. They put, um, some people use ethanol, but this, for the Cobia study, South Carolina uses soap. 
it's oh, wow. kind of a soap, so it's not. You can ship those in the mail. Yeah, that was the big them. issue with the Goliath ones. They can't ship them. Yeah, you can't ship the alcohol, the ethanol, and then I'll we'll pull a gonad off of each fish and put uh, just a section of this in there. And once we once these are processed, they'll put it on a microscope slide, and it'll be like looking at a cross section of what the reproductive organ is doing. So we'll be able to determine whether it was in spawning condition, whether it's mature, whether it's immature, and then what kind of spawning condition it is. If it's spawned, we'll see some uh, POFs, which are follicles that release the uh, eggs out into the water. Um, so that's an indication that they spawn. Um, and then we'll also take, with our hacksaw, we'll take Oh, this will be the interesting yeah, part. Can't wait hard, to show you guys this. The hardest part is uh, the Kobe of Thav's really hard head. So we have to use a hacksaw like this and we give it a, we scalp it. We basically scalp it in and you'll see a, um, what we're looking for is it's called an otolith. And that otolith will give us the age of the fish. Um, it's a little tricky getting them out of Kobe because they're so small for a big fish, but we'll, uh, we'll pull those out too. That's about it. So it's kind of a cool comparison you can do by getting the otolith, you can tell how old the fish is by getting the length and weight you can tell how big the fish is and then you can see where it is in the i guess with the reproductive cycle so you can see how long it takes for a fish to become mature and compare all sorts of things with these with this data yeah so you want to i'll do this one weigh that guy first yeah we're gonna weigh them all and then we'll or i guess we can just do one at a time yeah we'll do one at a oh, time this tail's still on it there you go so this one's 16.3 I'll round up. Yeah, 16.3. Nice cobia. Yeah. We like to get standard since we got the fish and it's going to be 800 millimeters. There's that fin clipping for the genetic yeah, fin clip material. Right and we'll put it in this little vial. And it goes in that soap and it preserves it until they can get it and do their analysis on it. That one's done. Out of here. So these are testes, usually white, triangular shape. Um, you know, the females will be orange and you can see some row in it. Um, both of them, so both lobes. So I'll just remove that and then take a section of it and put it in the formalin that we've got in these jars here. You want one of these open? Yeah, number 14. Oh, that's right. Okay, awesome, thank you. So we'll just take like a cross section of this. Oh, okay. And we'll just place it in the jar. So that's the male, and usually the um, sperm will come out of the main sperm duct, which is usually right here. So, well, that's good to go. And I'll keep this just to um, get a weight of it when I get back to the lab. Oh my goodness. They all got hard heads. Yeah. So now, give it a scalp. Now I see. Oh my gosh. So he's cutting that straight down cut and then going sideways and wait till you see what this exposes. It exposes what my power head normally goes flying through. The brain and behind the brain is where the O with is. I just gotta get it, I can't get it. I'm trying not to cut my fingers. Yeah. Where's that rag? Right here. There it goes. Got better grip. So, now, so is that its brain? Is that like its entire yeah, brain? Yeah, that's the brain right there. When people stone a fish, I wonder why I can never stone a cobia. Maybe it's because its brain's the size of a freaking dime. And oh, this should be right here. Or it's gonna be down in here. One of those two places, right behind the brain. Oh my gosh, that's a cobia brain right there. I'm assuming the otoliths are down in the other part of the head. Nothing there. Okay. 
So, so we're nothing gonna... on the top, so they must be hiding in the bottom. That might be one right there. Does it happen? Oh, there you go. That one is a lot of blood. Yep, there we go, one right there. They're so small in these things. There's the other one. There's the other one. This one right here, and one, one, two. Let's see. So these can vary in size insanely depending on the species. Fish like grouper and tile fish, like bottom fish, I guess maybe because they're at a deeper depth, is that why? Um, yeah, they're more sessile. The ones that are pelagic and swim around a lot, they don't have as big as others. I mean, you saw those things this big. I had a tile fish and they were like this big. They were huge on a giant tile. So this one's done. So he's we'll going to go me. back in the cooler. This is where the oh, And we'll go ahead and fillet this thing in a little while. <laughs> My weight guess, 21. Oh, pretty darn close. What do we got? 21.2. Oh man, way off. 21. I stayed under the actual retail sale price though, so I win. <laughs> All right. Nice, Cobia. This is, I think, our bigger one from the day. So that is what it looks like after Jim's got all the stuff they need out of it. And this guy, he's not going to waste though. I mean, not that it went to waste, but this is still a perfectly good to eat fish right there. And that is the next step. Two down, two males. Last one, and we got us a female, so we get to show you that too. So yes, these are a little more round. They'll be orangey, reddish. You see some blood vessels in there, and then it's also ovaries. They have oocytes in them, some eggs, basically eggs. So we did the same thing with all of them, but we're, we're just going to pull this out and get a cross section of it so we can get it mounted on a microscope and determine what state of spawning it's in. It's probably spawning capable. Oh, that's it. Female, row or ovaries. Perfect. This has to go down as my most informative yeah. video ever as far as like the science of it all. Didn't really teach you how to catch cobia, but you already know that. Crazy cloud, so I've been going back and forth between getting stuff put away and checking to see where Jim is on this, and we're just about finished up.